Hey everybody, it's Daniel here from Mobile Syrup, and uh, today we're looking at the Tiny HTC Desire C, and this is a spiritual successor to the Wildfire series. This is available for $150 outright on Virgin, and it's coming soon to Bell, sorry, to uh, Fido and to Rogers and Sasktel. In fact, on Sasktel, this is available for $99 outright, I think, at a promotional price. And what we have here is a entry-level Android phone that just uh, hits all the right marks. So, except for the 4 480 by 320 resolution screen, we have some pretty decent specs here. So, while this is starting up, let's take a look around the device. We have uh, a 3.5 inch uh, HVGA screen, so not the highest resolution, but uh, you know it does the trick. It's pretty nice actually, and the viewing angle's not too bad. It, it definitely uh, lowers in brightness as you move it around, but it's nothing to snuff at. There's no front-facing camera here, and on the back there is a 5 megapixel camera without an LED flash, so that's something to take into account as well. Uh, internally we're looking at a 600 megahertz single core processor, 512 megs of RAM, 4 gigs of internal storage, but there is an SD slot on the side, which I'll show you in a second. We have that same button layout as we do on the One Series, so you can see back, home, and multitasking. And instead of using a virtual bar at the bottom here, it actually allows you to hold down on the multitasking button like on the One V in order to hit that menu. So that's actually a better system in my opinion and something that manufacturers like HTC should look at as uh, more vendor, as more software manufacturers um, continue to get around that Google mandated menu button, I think. This is a very good solution, in my opinion, and something that maybe the One Series should uh, implement as an option. So if you're on the One X or the One S, you should have the option of, dis of uh, disabling that virtual bar at the bottom and actually allowing you to hold down on one of the buttons, for example. But that's neither here nor there. What we have here is Android 4.0.3, and it looks very similar to the One X and the One S, but it takes a little bit while a little while to respond. This is certainly not the fastest device on the market, but it definitely does the trick. Let's turn off the screen for now, however, and take a look around the device. On the right side, we have a volume rocker, and on the bottom, we have a microphone for a voice. We have a micro USB port, and on the top, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a power button. On the back we have that 5 megapixel camera sans flash and a speaker, very small speaker, but this does support Beats audio, so if you do own a pair of Beats headsets, this will sound great. This is not uh, the integrated battery that uh, we have on the One X and the One S, but it has a really nice red interior here. There's a 1230mAh battery here, I'm not going to take that out, but uh, the SIM card is right underneath. And then on the right side, we have a micro SD slot, so you do have the option to expand this up to 32 gigabytes if you do choose. That's really good because the four gigabytes of internal storage is broken up and you only have about 100 megabytes of usable storage for media when you install, uh, when you first boot up. So you're definitely going to want to get a micro SD slot, micro SD card. They're very cheap. In terms of software preloaded, we have things like Block Breaker, and uh, other game loft demos. This is a Bell device, so it's running on Virgin's network, but essentially it's Bell. So we have other Bell inclusions here, and those include Bell Mobile TV, which supports, um, which is uh, included on a lot of Virgin and Bell plans these days. You also have some nice inclusions such as Polaris Office, and some uh, apps like TuneIn Radio, which is included on most Bell devices these days. So not that much bloatware actually. We're actually pretty happy with the lack of bloatware here. Unfortunately, um, you can't delete them if you don't want them, but you can disable them. So if you go into the app menu here and you go to your apps, and for example, I want to remove this Block Breaker 3 Unlimited, you can actually just press disable. So you can't uninstall it, but it won't show up once you enable it in the app. It won't show up once you disable it 
in the uh, app drawer. So it's gone essentially, even though it's still on the, the, the device, you can't free up that extra space, but at least it's gone from the app drawer if you don't want it. Uh, this is running pretty smoothly, all things considered. You can see that the the camera is really responsive, and you only get about 74 uh, photos, 75 photos out of the box. The options for video are also pretty limited. You can also you can only take video at a maximum resolution of 640 by 480, and that's owed to the slower 600 megahertz processor in here. But basically. This is a great little Android smartphone. You know, you have a fully featured QWERTY keyboard, supports landscape mode as well. So you have that great HTC experience. You have all those features that you would have on a more expensive Android device. Uh, and running Android 4.0.3, you can actually install things like Chrome for Android and a bunch of other apps that are only compatible with the newest version. Uh, you have a ton of these Bell widgets and uh, HTC widgets pre-installed, but you can always just get rid of them if you don't want them. So, for example, if I just want to get rid of it, I can hold down and drag to the remove. And there we go. If I hold down on the screen anywhere where there's nothing um, already there, you can scroll through your widgets and add as you will. So, lots of interesting and uh, exceptional um, services from HTC on a very very cheap device and something that you're going to want to consider if you don't want to spend more than hundred fifty dollars outright on a phone this could just be your backup phone in case you lose your your main Android phone or if you want to get your kid a uh, you know their first device and not pay too much this is a great option you also get things like Google navigation with the built-in Bluetooth uh, with the built-in GPS you have Wi-Fi enabled, um, you have Wi-Fi included, for example. You can also create a mobile hotspot uh, on the HSPA Plus network on Virgin. This does not support uh, very high speeds. This is not an LTE device, but you, uh, you, know, you can still use those, those uh, services if you want. Now, in terms of battery life, we're looking at probably more than a day here. The low resolution screen, the efficient processor, and the very small amounts of internal storage and RAM are not going to eat that much into the battery. You, uh, you can't expect more than one day from this. As I said with the storage, um, you only have about one gigabyte free of uh, app space and then you only have about um, 95 megabytes free for your um, general phone media. So you're definitely going to want to add a storage card if you have it. So that's just a quick overview of the HTC Desire C. This is available on Virgin. It's coming soon to Fido and Rogers and uh, you can t purchase it on Sastel as well. So this is Daniel from Mobile Sphere. Thanks so much for watching.